Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So Bitcoin has been stuck in a range right now with general upside bias on a shorter term time frame. We've been bounding between around 88k and 93k for most of December and we can't really break out in either direction. And so the Fed cut rates uh, a couple of days ago and Bitcoin briefly rallied to $94,000 and came right back down to around uh, $90,000 where we are right now. So today I want to give you a quick update on where we are what the on-chain data is showing and what I'm watching for over the next couple of weeks as we head into year end. So let's dive into the charts here. So let's start out with what has been happening most recently with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has been stuck in this, this range for nearly the entire month of December with some higher lows on a shorter term time frame being printed here. So this is kind of what you'd expect after seeing a, a major stair stepping, you know, down from what we saw the all time high to now and we're currently on day 68 of this downtrend from that 126k peak we hit back on october 6th and yes uh, a couple days ago the fed cut rates by 25 basis points that was pretty much expected by the market everyone knew it was coming and so if you listen to to powell's press conference uh, uh like i did the tone was pretty hawkish right that the dot plot that they uh that they that they release uh, they're only expecting one more cut in all of 2026. And Powell kept emphasizing that they're, you know, well positioned to wait to see how the economy essentially is, evolves. And that's, you know, Fed speak for, you know, we're probably done cutting for a while. They also brought back this language, you know, about c carefully assessing the extent and, and the timing uh, of future cuts, which is the same phrasing they used back in, in December 2024, right before they started pausing again for like nine months, if you don't know. And so the market's initial reaction was to rally, Bitcoin rallied up to 94K. But then as people actually digested what Powell was, was actually saying, basically that there are no rush to cut again, then Bitcoin essentially came right back down to where it was before the announcement. Now, <clears throat> here's something a bit interesting to keep in mind though. Powell's term as Fed chair ends in May, 2026. And we're getting a new Fed chair in about six months, right? And historically, new Fed leadership tends to be uh, more dovish initially when Powell was first uh, introduced chair in 2017. You know, they want to come in, establish credibility, support the economy, avoid rocking you know, the boat too much. So while Powell might be taking the this hawkish stance now, we're done, oops, sorry, you know, we're done cutting, we're waiting, the new fed, the new fed chair might come coming in in may might you know completely change that tone although it might not might not happen either uh, as well so that's a bit uh dubious i guess they might be more willing to cut rates if the economy shows any weaken, weakness obviously so the fed might stay might continue to stay tight within the first few months of 2026 but once we get that new leadership transition in may we could see a shift back to more accommodative policy, right? So that's something to watch here. So, so right now we are sitting around ninety thousand dollars for Bitcoin right now, basically back where we were right before the the Fed meeting. And the key levels I'm watching are pretty clear. You know, eighty one thousand dollars on the downside is major support, and around ninety five thousand uh, dollars on the upside as resistance. If we break through ninety five k and hold it. We could make a you know a decent run at a hundred thousand dollars before year end, and on the flip side, if we break eighty six, eighty eight thousand dollars, I think we are headed back down to retest that eighty one thousand dollar level we hit a couple of weeks ago, or potentially even lower to retest the true market mean. And right now the the market is just stuck, right? We can't break out in either direction. And so what I want to look at is some some on chain data and what that's telling us. And so the the true market mean here sits at around eighty one thousand dollars four hundred, uh, and Bitcoin's currently at ninety thousand dollars. So we're about nine thousand dollars above the true market mean. That's not a huge cushion, but we haven't you know tested it again since we bounced off of it uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm still watching that level very closely. If we break below eighty six thousand dollars and start heading towards eighty one thousand, then that's going to be a critical test. If the true market mean breaks, I think we would be heading towards the realized price. As a potential market cycle bottom area to watch so uh, another chart i want to show here is short-term holders so these are people who bought in the last 155 days their average cost basis is around 102 thousand dollars so bitcoin's currently at ninety thousand dollars they're underwater by about 15 percent right 
Long-term holders, on the other hand, are still way up on their positions. Their cost basis is around $37,000. So they're still up over 140%. And so what this tells me, right, is that newer buyers, the people who bought at $100,000 are feeling more pain right now. And historically, when short-term holders are underwater, that's when we start to see more selling pressure unfold in the Bitcoin. You know, historically, when Bitcoin goes below the short-term holder cost basis, that's historically when we start to see more resistance play out. And so the MVRV mean, uh, the MVRV is still in the green zone here. We've not yet hit the blue yet, which would indicate deep bear market accumulation territory. Green basically means, just to sum it up, I guess, uh, means we're in decent accumulation territory, but we haven't hit that amazingly, you know, deep bear market accumulation territory. So if we drop down to the realized price, that would get us somewhere near near uh, the MVRV minus one standard deviation that would probably put you around that that blue level there just to interpolate uh, extrapolate a bit, a bit there so the on-chain data is basically telling us you know we're in a correction but we haven't hit yet we haven't yet hit that amazing deep value zone yet that would come if we drop you know closer to the realized price area in my opinion so the on-chain uh so let me tell you uh sorry, <laughs> sorry. let me show you a couple of other charts here so um this is the uh short-term holder to realize short-term holder to long-term holder realized price ratio so this is basically showing us the ratio between what short-term holders paid versus what long-term holders paid the purple ratio uh purple line is the ratio here when it's above one that means long-term holders paid less or short-term holders paid more than long-term holders when it's below one that means long-term holders paid more right so right now we're sitting at about 2.85 and so and that means that short-term holders have paid almost three times more than long-term holders on average. So if we look at the orange line here, the short-term holder cost basis, that's currently around $102,000. The green line, $37,000. So short-term holders are underwater. Long-term holders are still way up. Historically, when this ratio gets high or maintains positive momentum for, for quite a few uh, months, that's typically when uh, you know, you see distribution phases play out for Bitcoin. New buyers are basically coming in at much higher prices than the old holders, right? So when those new buyers come in, uh, you know, uh, they become weak hands when the price actually eventually corrects, right? And if you look at the bottom of the chart here, those green bars and red bars show whether the ratio is trending up or down, right? So red means it's compressing or going down and short-term holders are, are basically getting better prices relative to long-term holders, right? So we're still seeing momentum to the downside, seeing red bars here uh, at around, uh, switched red at around $107,000, which basically indicates that we are moving towards more balanced on-chain conditions with respect to these two, two cohorts. And so another chart I wanna look at is the seller exhaustion constant. This is a pro chart, it's a bit more advanced. Uh, basically it measures the percentage of supply in profit multiplied by volatility so when this metric drops really low it indicates short-term holder seller exhaustion so when holders are, are underwater stressed uh, and the volatility is low it can historically uh, show accumulation opportunities right so if you look at the most recent data we did drop very low on this metric uh, when we hit eighty thousand dollars a couple weeks ago that red spike down uh, down to here shows basically extreme stress on these short-term holders and this isn't uh, the best at timing exact market bottoms but it does show when short-term holders are under extreme pressure and we saw that you know when we hit eighty thousand dollars right so between these two metrics and the short-term holder to long-term holder realized price ratio uh showing new buyers are underwater and three times the price of, of older holders and the seller exhaustion constant showing you know, a lot of stress when we when we tested that eighty-one thousand dollars level. level. Uh, the on-chain data is basically confirming, you know, that short-term holders are still feeling a lot of pain right now. So here's here's where I'm still standing. I'm still operating under the assumption that 2026 will be a bear market year, and I've been saying that for for a while now. And nothing nothing that's happened in the last few weeks months has changed my view. Still, in fact, if anything, it's it's confirmed it right now. While I while I do think that I think we could see a short term bounce 200k before December, I, I think it is possible. 
we've got less than three weeks left, but Bitcoin you know, can move fast historically. If we break above that 95K level and, and hold it, I think there's a decent shot of touching 100K just for psychological reasons, you know, year end liquidity, Santa Claus rally, all that stuff, right? And then essentially, you know, I, I think we would retest these short term roller cost bases and the MVRV mean and probably bounce, uh, you know, retest that level and probably hold it as resistance. That's my opinion. I think it won't hold. Uh, I think it would be a quick spike and then pretty much right back down. Uh, similar to what we saw in in 2022 when we first saw the bear market essentially play out, right? We got a test uh, to the true market mean, got another test to the true market mean after retesting the MVRV mean and then essentially retesting the short-term holder cost basis and the MVRV mean, which by the way, uh, basically converged on the way down, right? So the short-term holder cost basis went below the MVRV mean, similar to what we're seeing right now play out where the short-term holder cost basis is starting to converge and, and uh, cross below the MVRV mean, right? So my base case is that we're heading lower into 2026, right? I'm targeting you know, somewhere in between 50 to $60,000. I think that would be reasonable given that Bitcoin has historically seen diminishing returns uh, to the downside as well as to the upside. That would be about a 50%, uh, negative 50% to negative 60% correction from the peak uh, on October. So here's what I'm watching for over the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, if that $81,000 level does hold on the true market mean, and that's a big one. If that breaks, we're probably going to retest the realized price at currently around $56,000. And uh, third of all, you know, do we break uh, lower into the blue on the MVRV? I mean, that would basically confirm we're, we're in deep bear market and, and that would be pretty amazing accumulation uh, zone. Historically, you know, last cycle when this, when this did go down to the blue zone, that's mostly where I was accumulating. I did accumulate on the way down as well. And I also bought the top. Uh, so that's good to, to hear. Um, but I did hold all the way through here. And so essentially, as long as you keep holding Bitcoin, I think it'll basically outperform over long enough, a long enough time horizon, right? So, and four, right? Does the seller, uh, does short, do short term holders continue to capit capitulate here? When they start selling at a loss in, in large numbers, that's usually when we're close to a bottom, right? If we put a little bit of a more smoothing, uh, smoothing on the chart, you can see historically when short-term holders feel extreme pain over a long enough time horizon, that's essentially when bear market bottoms form as well on this metric, right? So we saw in 2022, in 2018, in 2014, and in 2011, we didn't get as low. Currently, we're actually extremely low on this metric, which I, I don't necessarily think is, is a is a bad thing. Uh, I think although that this might be a good accumulation zone, we're well below, uh, you know, the short term holder cost basis. I think that is a main part of it. I think a more a better accumulation zone would be anywhere below the true market mean at eighty one thousand dollars in between that and the realized price. Right. So, uh, you know, all in all, you can track all these charts at chartsback.com. Uh, if you're a pro member, by the way, uh, you can set alerts on all these metrics so you can know, you know, when we hit these you know, key on change support levels, when we retest $81,000 the true market mean. Um, I'm also in the process of integrating on chain updates uh, every block for pro members. So on average, that's about 10 minutes or so. So thank you guys for watching. If you found this helpful, hit the like, subscribe, comment down below. I'll keep you guys updated as you know, we nav navigate through this uh, Bitcoin, uh, downtrend, right? So, uh, I'll thank you for, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.